Hey everyone, this is Ross and we've got ourselves a nice little fig harvest for today, a nice little tasting. This is about five different varieties here that we're going to go over in today's video. Um, it was pretty rainy last night, I'm not going to lie. Yesterday was very rainy, so the quality on this is not perfect. It's not ideal, but I can see already some of these actually ripened really well even though it was raining. And Part of that I just have to attribute to the trash bags that we've put over top of these pots. We did a whole video on that discussing, we did actually a couple videos on that, discussing why this is good and why this could potentially be bad and all the different things about it. We've talked it, I've talked about it to death, to be honest with you. Um, I want to show you guys a couple of these trees on these particular varieties. There's one variety in particular that really deserves a showcase, which is the Rasty Persian Unknown. It's this really small yellow fig here, honey type fig. Not the most beautiful interior, not the tastiest fig, but if I bring you guys over to this tree, I've had actually quite a few figs off of this already. It's only like August 8th or 9th or 7th or something like that. I forget the date, guys. But you can see this is the tree. We grafted this onto Celeste, and this is from my buddy um, Steve in Maryland, and this is like a fig that he just somehow attained. I forget how he got this from some guy, and this one comes from the Middle East. And uh, I don't know what it is, but this is probably the first leaf shape that I've actually seen that looks reasonable because the tree seems to really suffer for whatever reason from uh, nutrient deficiency. And then therefore you're seeing a lot of FMV on this tree, but it's now starting to finally cut, get, its, get its act together here. It fruited last year. It's also an extremely early variety. And this is why I wanna show you guys this. This is like, one of the earliest, if not the earliest varieties, right? There's very, there's like a handful of them. There's maybe 10 or 12 stupidly early varieties like Ronde Bardot, Improved Celeste. You know, you've got things like My Azores Dark. You've got um, this fig right here. There's Floria, Michurinska 10. There is also another one that's popping up recently called Detrace Displace. You can see over here, this is my Detrace Displace that we really pruned heavily last year. So it's a bit, it's a bit far behind. There's also Vertolino. There's, there's a number of these trees, by the way, that are really coming together now. Figujan, that should ripen very, very early. Albo is another one, Pastiliere. Um, so there's a, there's a lot to choose from in this category nowadays of this really early varieties. But I would consider this fig the most reliable fig that I think exists. <laughs> and it's a pretty ridiculous claim, um, especially because it's not very old, as you could tell. I have only had it for two years now. Um, but it's showing incredible characteristics. One in the fact that it's really early. So we're almost guaranteed fruit every year here in this climate and in much colder climates than my own, much shorter season climates than my own. So this one, for that reason, is incredible. Um, but there's other figs that do that. The second reason, which I think is nuts, is that it got through our two inches of rain yesterday with very little issues. It didn't split. The skin sort of deteriorated. We're gonna see now when we taste this fig what it actually tastes like after it rains so much. But what's incredible is that it goes from like this stage here where it just starts to swell, which was yesterday. Now this is day two. By day three, this is gonna be ripe. Tomorrow this fig is gonna be ripe. Um, and it's gonna even have those sugar spots on it. It's just kind of nuts uh, that this fig, pretty much from like the day it starts to swell at only a very short window afterwards, it's ready to be picked which is unheard of. That's very, very rare. The only fig I have like that is LSU Champagne. Um, and, I, and I think even that is way earlier than that. And then you pretty much got yourself, because of that, because of those two characteristics, because it ripens so early, and not only that, but you, you can pick it at a very early time and nothing's gonna get to it, like no critter's gonna get to it. Uh, the rain's not going to bother it. Um, it just creates a scenario where even in the worst conditions, let's say, that fig is going to still produce for you. So for me, I don't have a single fig that in my mind could beat it just yet. 
However, it's not really the tastiest fig. And you can see that here. I did have one that was actually pretty decent. The longer you let them hang, they look pretty ugly, by the way. And they look really ugly and you can pick it at that point. But if you let it hang even just a little bit longer than that, you'll definitely get rewarded. But again, this is not the prettiest fig, but let's taste it. It's actually quite good. And I would say that's probably like a two out of five. Um, approaching a three out of five. And I think I had one, because I've had about 10 fruits off of that tree already, which is nuts uh, for this portion of the season. It really has a short window too. That's another thing I forgot to mention is that, so it ripens very early, the hang time is very short, and the ripening window is very short. So even in the worst conditions, I think that fig legitimately could ripen for you. Um, so if you want to grow figs, I think that's like the fig. Like for people in zone five and zone four, and people in like Ireland and England and even the Pacific Northwest that rely on brabas rather than main crop, I think that's a really good choice, guys. Uh, so look into that one. It's not really that widely available just yet, but uh, we're trying. I'm actually going to air layer it, I think, and I'm going to put one of them in the ground. Um, we're going to do a lot of air layers coming soon, by the way, for those of you guys who are interested in that. Uh, okay, so next fig here is the LSU Scots Black. This one's been really productive for me. It's really early, too, this year with the help of the greenhouse. We talked a lot about the Braba earlier this season. It had the best quality Brabas this year. And astoundingly enough, um, I had thought that the main crop was going to be delayed by quite a bit, but it, it hasn't been. And it's been right on schedule. For me to be getting these fruits in early August is incredible. With the seven Braba that I had, oh my God, there's a big, um, a big, uh, whatever that is, big cicada, I think, flying right above me. But uh, yeah, this is not the best quality that I've had on the main crop or even the Braba but it did rain quite a bit and you can see the skin deteriorated so I didn't want to chance this and have it spoil on me. So let's try it. I would say LSU Scots Black, this one's a bit underripe. LSU Scots Black is a standard three out of five. Um, now I want to show you guys what the potential is to be a five out of five or even a four out of five. We haven't had a single fig other than maybe one of the LSU Scott's Black Brabas that was a four out of five. But on average, I would say LSU Scott's Black is only a three. But this fig here, Coldenom Blanc, is by far my best fig in terms of flavor. It is the tastiest fig that I have. And I can make that claim uh, because the texture is out of this world. It's different than any other fig for the most part. It's so thick that it's kind of like eating pancake batter uh, in a way. Like it's, it's kind of like eating cake, like a very thick interior on this thing. Um, but obviously it tastes like a fig and it's actually quite complex. Let's taste it. I don't know if this one really ripened all that properly. On this side, you can kind of see how it was kind of having some issues here. It also doesn't look perfectly right, but um, to get cold on Blanc in the beginning of August, again, it's just nuts. Huh. Yeah. So, it's got that really awesome, oh my God, even the flavor is good. It's just really good, guys. That's incredible. It's just so thick, guys. I don't really know how to describe it. It's not even really like like jam at this point. Like some of these figs are a bit jammy or maybe like a jelly or maybe like, um, you know, something maybe entirely different. This is like a thicker jam that's not fruit leather. Like, you know, you, you make jam and it kind of gets hard and it turns into fruit leather. Um, that's not what this is. This is like, it's like a batter, man. It's like some kind of cake type, like you baked this thing and, and that's what it is. It's really strange. So for me guys, this is indeed a, a five out of five. 
mainly for the texture. And it's really interesting how this happens. I want to explain it to you guys. Uh, first off, all the cold adams have this, whether it's Grease, Noir, Ramada, almost all of them have this, the same shape. That's kind of how they get it, but also the low acnes, the low seeds in that if you look at this fig, it's, it's pretty uniform. It looks like one solid fig, one solid piece of jam, I guess is one way of explaining it. Whereas if you look at this fig back here, Fico Nita has a lot of white strands. See these white little parts in the fig? Those are the female flowers in the fig that at the end of it is a seed on most flowers. And there could be any number of these. There could be from like, I think maybe a hundred to, to 300 or somewhere around there of these individual flowers. And these are what create the, the gel, the, the, um, the flavors. And this is also what gets pollinated, by the way, if they were to be pollinated. But each individual flower can be so pronounced, so large, they come in different sizes, they come in different amounts. On the Fico Nita, it's in larger size and in a higher amount, it seems like. Whereas the Col de Dames, the distinct feature here is that there's less seeds, which means there are less acnes, less female flower parts, and they're shorter, they're smaller. So they're smaller and they're also less in number, creating a more uniform fig, which creates that really interesting uh, texture. It's just, that's how it is. You know, you've also got figs like this one here, which may, when you bite into them, may actually feel in your mouth similar to the Col de Dame because it's got all this syrup. And the syrup really changes that texture quite significantly. I find makes it more smooth, more jammy, but uh, the cold adams, man, they are really just in a class of its own. I've been trying to find a fig that has a similar texture to, to the cold adams that ripens earlier here. And so far, the only fig I can really rely on is white triana, and for that, I really value that fig. There's a few others I have on like my list, my radar that uh, maybe are going to fruit this year, or maybe they are another year or two away. Um, so we'll have to wait and see on those, but I have a number of figs that could potentially replace the cold and arms. And, uh, that will be a really exciting day because they're an incredible fig. And it almost seems like it could be impossible just based off of, you know, this is cold and arm. It's unique. You know, there's nothing else sort of like it, although you can come close. Uh, it's tempting. It's really difficult for me to say that this is like you know, gonna be replaced one day. I think I may always have Col de Nom Blanc or one of the Col de Noms. I actually planted a Col de Nom Blanc in the greenhouse. So we're gonna have this one for greenhouse commercial production. Um, by the way, this one's really small. Um, the other figs so far have been the right size, but this is really small. And if I take you over to the Col de Nom Blanc tree, you can see right here, I mean, this is much larger and most of these will become a much larger size. I think the first couple I've had just, they don't normally get the same size as they, uh, they normally produce. Even this one's probably gonna be next after the one I just showed you, and that one's a bit larger as well. Um, so I think they're, it's a pretty lar medium to large size fig. Uh, honestly, one of the better figs for commercial production by far. Um, and it has the best texture of any fig I know of. Um, all right, so let's taste Fico Nita. This is a fig that's actually quite big and it reminds me a lot of a Black Mission type fig. Um, the Black Missions have just honestly the opposite texture of what I want. The worst texture you can think of in a fig where it has a lot of seeds. Um, you know, that could be a really good thing for pollinating, for pollination for drying figs because then you get more of a sea crunch and that's actually more pleasurable. But for a fresh fig, I don't get it. I really don't get it. If the Black Mission types, Black Mission in general, if they didn't really ship well and, and, um, and could be handled well and didn't handle the heat well, uh, I just think it's the worst fig you could have for, for like fresh consumption. It just really doesn't, 
normally taste all that great. Yeah, it does have a decent berry flavor. This one seems to be a quick, quite different though than your typical black mission fig. So it's not exactly the same. I don't want to say it's the same, but it's certainly shaping up to be quite similar to other black mission types. Um, it ripened quite early this year because of the, the greenhouse. Actually, every day that goes by, it's, it's kind of shaping up more like a black mission. Um, when it first started out, it really reminded me of like a more amber black mission. It, it didn't get that red coloring to it. Um, this one seems to split quite a bit. And last year it was very beautiful. The exterior is definitely very beautiful on it. For me though, it's not a fig that I am gonna grow again. Um, for me, that is like a two, it's a two out of five, similar to the, the Rasties in terms of flavor, but um, for other characteristics, it just is not, it's not worth having here. Um, yeah, like I said, it's not really the best fig to be eaten fresh. Now here is probably going to be the the uh, second best of the bunch. This is, in fact, it may actually be the best of the bunch. I'm hoping this thing replaces Col de Don Blanc. And this is the Paradiso that I have from uh, my buddy Ciro. And I asked Ciro a couple days ago because it didn't look right to me because the interior was amber and he just said just wait it'll turn red um, so whatever this is it does look a lot today it looks a lot like Paradiso so I'm pretty con I'm pretty convinced now that this is indeed Paradiso he was right he said just be you know just wait have some patience and uh, I think he's right however it does look a bit like Verdone, so we'll see. We'll be we'll compare at some point here. You know, I'm gonna taste this side because I think this side's a bit more ripe um, on camera. But you can see the exterior has got some sugar spots to it. The interior is filled with syrup or honey, however you want to call it. This looks like it's gonna be really thick, really jammy which is why I'm thinking this one's gonna be on the same level of the Col de Nam. I know it has a great flavor. And the few that I've already tasted, by the way, that I've already sent pictures to Ciro of, they were amber in color, so they didn't have that berry flavor. However, they were so thick and jammy uh, and almost like a Col de Nam that I was blown away. So I think this is gonna have the same texture as this. We'll find out right now. Not the same texture. This one's really jammy. Very sweet. Huh. That's interesting. So this is a bit of a letdown, to be honest with you. I, it's weird because the other figs I had off of this were actually better. Um, this time around, it's got a slight berry flavor to it. Um, not the most intense berry flavor. Very sweet. Um, so for me, it's not really that complex. You can see that it has large acnes in there, lots of seeds. And because it's so got so much nectar, so much syrup in there, uh, it just doesn't have that same thick gooiness that the, uh, the Col de Nom Blanc has. So, yeah, that's kind of the video here, guys. I, I do, I guess we can end right now and just show you real quickly. This is my Paradiso tree. It is just loaded with figs. Um, look at that little density right there. Again, over here in this branch, and this whole thing was covered, and now look at the density up in here. It's just covered with figs. We're, we're also air layering it off of this very strange tree that it, it's on and just how this whole thing formed. It was really not ideal, kind of ugly, and I'm not a fan of the form. Uh, Fico Nita has been quite productive this year. LSU Scott's Black, you guys have already seen that. It's been quite productive. 
Colden on Blanc, I've been thoroughly impressed with in terms of the production this year. Here's the LSU Scots Black and what's kind of left on the tree of the main crop. Still plenty of figs left to go. Uh, probably the most productive fig of the year, I think. Um, alrighty, so that was it, guys. I want to thank everybody here for sticking in. And here's the last little shot, last little view of the figs we ate. And uh, yeah, catch you all soon. Take care, guys.